Hello everybody, welcome. I've got a lump of clay here, it's weighing in at 10 pounds. Diez libras. So we're going to put that on the wheel, I'm going to try to make a kind of charger, you know, like a big, a big plate. So let's get the let's get the camera there. Just basically zoomed in on what we're doing. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think that's about right. Okay. Um, all right. So. 10 pounds of clay. Let's see what we can do with this. I haven't made one of these for a long time. So, who knows what might happen. First thing, make sure that the base is nice and round and there are no sort of crevices here that could make for an air pocket when I put it down on the wheel. So I'm gonna put it down on the wheel now. Now I've, I've purposely have this clay a little bit on the softer side than I would normally. So I'm just smacking the lump of clay here, not with the rotation of the electric mo motor making it go around, but just my own slapping. You may ask, well, why are you doing that? And the reason I'm doing this is to, uh, when I come to put the water and to actually start centering it, it just, it reduces some of the donkey work, you know, some of the grunt it takes out of it. That's basically the reason. So, now with my fist, just going around like this, thumping it down evenly. You'd be surprised when it comes to putting the water on and getting it, all this unevenness disappears it's relatively easy to get it into the center. If you've got a lot of strength, of course, you can just... If your name is Guy Wolf, you'd be laughing now, thinking, what on earth are you doing, Simon? Just get into it, man. Lean into it with your body weight. <laughs> of course, he, he, he throws standing up at the wheel so he I'm not actually doing that okay so let me just bring the camera there so you can see what I'm on about okay you can see there how I thumped it I know it looks um, looks a bit irregular um, let me just check that got, got us still in the picture there. Yeah, okay. So now the wheel going around.
don't want to be going too fast because speed kills <laughs> it can bring wobbles I'm just at the moment just trying to determine the base the base thickness that's why I'm using this yeah that's Surprising amount of clay you need to make a um, more. You, you always need. Always surprises me. You always need more clay to make a plate than you would than you would perhaps think. I actually prefer a, a kick type wheel for doing these kind of pots. These and electric wheels are not very well suited for doing this. So I've got myself a rib here. I'm going to try to just use the rib a little bit. I concentrate on a nice form here in the base. <laughs> it's funny as I do this, I realize I had a practice, man, at doing this, I tell you. I've always had a problem with my kilns for some reason. I've never had a kiln that's been able to really satisfactorily fire big plates. The plates are a bit susceptible for to cracking and that kind of thing. You know, sometimes when you throw in a pot and you see you've got a bit of a wobble on it, as this one has, you can console yourself with the fact that when the wheel is stationary, tell me, can you see the wobble? <laughs> you actually could do with just, I'm going to try and just trim a little bit off the be able to trim a little bit off the outside. Let's 
it. Which I've done. Now one accidental push of my foot pedal at this point with this wheel would just ruin this plate. If I just suddenly went too fast, it would be the end of it. It's more like a kick wheel because you can get, and I really mean a treadle wheel when I mean a kick wheel, I don't mean a direct kick wheel, I mean one of those, like the kind that you see me using in Spain. At a leech trail kit. I'm not really happy with this plate. You know, it's like anything that you make. You, the first one, you, if you haven't made anything for a while, the first one that you make, you th you kind of comes out a bit pear-shaped doesn't it sometimes one I will say one of the things I've got, got to be careful about when doing a, a plate is not don't get it too wide before you've got the height in other words make sure you get your height and then when you've got you're satisfied with the height and then lower it down and as you lower it down it, it, it gets wider and then you, you get your width you see So this, this fella will be for trimming, of course. These kind of plates one generally does trim. Well, I'm not gonna play around with it too much more. I'm just gonna leather, put a chamois leather on the rim here. Dee, dee, dee. He's wavering a little bit, isn't he? I wonder if that's because I... I'm practicing too, aren't we? <laughs> uh, let's take a, a top ways, a top ways view of that. See if I can unclip the camera from the tripod. Not too much fuss. There we are. Um, if you look carefully, you can see he's wavering up and down a little bit. You see there which is uh, all right well maybe I should have made him a little I maybe I flattened him off just a little bit too much and because uh, he was like slightly soft clay Got the slight wobbles. Oh well. <laughs> We've all got wobbles, haven't we, somewhere? <laughs> We're all cracked, aren't we? Crackpots. Simon Leach say, saying, keep practicing. See you soon. <laughs>